ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, my name is Rachel Zenberry. I am the chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, tonight is November 18th, 2024. Uh, let's see, uh, if we could start off, please, by having the board please uh, introduce themselves. Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Get along. And uh, unfortunately, we have one board member not joining us this evening, Shana, uh, Shana Corman Houston. Uh, we also this evening have uh, the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, joining us. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, so let's move right along into the first item in our agenda, which is the review of the meeting minutes from October 21st, 2024. And I will open it up to see if there are any additions or corrections, starting with Steve. Nothing here. Jean? No. Ken? Nothing. And I don't have any uh, additions or corrections either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes as submitted? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The meeting minutes have been approved. Let's move to the second uh, agenda item, which is the 2025 meeting schedule. And I will turn it over to Director Ricker. Thank you. Um, so staff uh, and I have worked on a proposed meeting schedule for 2025. We realized that um, as we're moving into December, um, continuances of hearings, et cetera, we're going to need to go to a, a, at least a date certain um, that we could agree on. And so we sketched out um, uh, the schedule, uh, a proposed schedule for, uh, for 2025. I think uh, of note, what I really would like to point out here is that although the ARB um, generally meets on the first and third Monday um, in January and February and March, I believe we have um, proposed the second and fourth um, Monday to avoid the Monday holidays and having to um, do uh, to avoid week-to-week uh, -week meetings and to stay on our regular um, bi-weekly schedule. Um, so I don't know how folks feel about that. I you know I, I thought it was a, a pretty good idea um, so that we would avoid those uh, avoid uh, Martin Luther King Day and then President's Day in February and then continuing into March. Um, with the same uh, second and fourth. I think we go back to regular first and third beginning in April, right before town meeting. Great. Um, discussion. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, any discussion, starting with Steve? Um, I, I think that's a fine schedule. Uh, of the dates proposed, I will have a conflict on uh, July 6th, but um, it's, a, it's something where I can attend remotely that evening. July 7th. July 7th? Oh, July, July 7th, yeah. Great, um, thank you. Uh, Jean? Yeah, this, yeah, first, thank you for doing it. I was trying to plan my next year. I was like, I wonder if we're gonna move any of the dates around. I was expecting January 6th, but January 13th is fine okay. for the meeting too, yeah. Good, okay. Um, the only item I have, uh, I think that April, should be the Monday is April 14th. I think it's, am, I, am I wrong? Instead of the 15th? I know that, that is the one that was changed because of Patriots Day on the 21st. So I think. You're right. It is April 14th. Okay. So I think we just need to move that date. Um, I'm going to highlight also in July that I may have a conflict on the 21st. I'm still um, working through my summer schedule. But um, I'm hoping that if that is something that in the next couple of months, as we all work to um, to work through our schedules for the summer, that we can, you know, hopefully by um, at least the middle of not the end of the first quarter, move any summer dates around that we might need to. That's fine. Yeah. That works for everyone. Ken? The only thing right now I see is the 16th, June 16th. And maybe a way that we, or what, I had to go home and check on that one. Okay, so maybe what we can do is, um, if the board um, is, and obviously Shana still needs to review this and give us her dates as well. Um, but if we use these as our tentative dates, we can wait until Shana is here at our next meeting to 
formally um, approve these dates and if we need to make any changes to the June, July, August dates, which are usually some of the bigger challenges that we um, all work towards doing so um, by January, February, if, if that's necessary. That's fine. I'm not available on June 9th, so we can't switch the June 2nd or June 16th, 16th, I think. To the 9th. I'm just saying. Got it. I'm out of town. So if the 16th is a good, we could do the 23rd, but. Might be able to do a remote too, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's let this help. Give me, give me a little time. That'll work. If we're a hotel, I can probably do a remote. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so let's um, continue our discussion of this agenda item uh, until our next meeting uh, when we have a full board hopefully with us. But at this time, we'll work towards planning those January. It looks like the January and February dates, mm -hmm. there are no conflicts, so we can work towards planning those if we need to. Great. Um, let's see. The next item on our agenda is uh, the uh, public hearing for docket number 3798-821 Mass Ave, which is continued from October 21st, 2024. I will turn it over to Director Ricker, as it looks like uh, the applicant has requested a continuance. Yes, thank you. So the applicant for 821 Mass Ave has requested a, contingent, a continuance. They are not available um, for the December 16th meeting. This is one of the reasons there was some urgency around trying to set some meeting dates for uh, January. Um, they are okay continuing to the first meeting in January. Um, once we have that confirmed, I, I think we should probably um, vote to continue to January 13th, um, and perhaps note that that is, tenant, or that, that is tentative until confirmed. Um, and the same is true for 821 to 837, which uh, is handcuffed is handcuffed to that 821 um, uh, application. Great. Um, perfect. So. Um, is there any discussion around the continuance of the 821 Mass Ave, uh, either uh, or both of the 821 and 821 to 837 Massachusetts Avenue um, hearings to January 13th, pending the board's approval of the schedule next week, or at our next meeting, rather? Okay, please. They're asking for continuance because they're making active changes that you just couldn't make the... They are making active changes to the plans um, per some input from uh, the building commissioner and from, uh, and from me as well. Okay. Yeah, fine. Okay. Gene? Uh, no problem. Steve? Fine by me. Okay. Um, is there a motion to, we'll start with the uh, agenda item number three. Is there a motion to continue docket number 3798 for 821 Massachusetts Avenue uh, to the uh, ARB's meeting date on uh, January 13th, subject to confirmation at the ARB's next meeting? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That closes agenda item number three. We'll now move to agenda item number four, which is uh, to uh, continue the public hearing for docket number 3348 for 821 to 837 Mass Ave. Is there a motion to continue that public hearing also to January 13th, uh, ten, uh, subject to the uh, final approval of the ARB schedule at our next meeting? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So let's move to the public hearing for docket number 3810, 149 Pleasant Street, which was continued from October 7th, 2024. And I will turn it over to Director Ricker. Great, thank you. Yes, um, the applicant has requested um, a continuance of the hearing to December 2nd, 2024, uh, to uh, in order to uh, submit materials that this board requested um, as part of the pro uh, as part of the hearing that they held on, uh, I believe it was August 5th, um, the um, 
the applicant is still working on submitting um, those materials. The applicant also recently went in front of the select board for a tree hearing related to that street tree that's part of uh, this project. Um, and it was one of the um, conditions, or at least one of the items that this board, this board, the ARB asked for, um, was that the tree, uh, that street tree situation, be somewhat resolved before they, uh, before we were to reconvene. Um, so we need to uh, just continue this one uh, to December second, and we should have those supplemental materials uh, for you shortly. Great, thank you. Any discussion? Starting with Ken. No. Gene. No. Steve. No. All right. Is there a motion to continue the public hearing for docket number 3810-149 Pleasant Street to December 2nd, 2024? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Gene. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That meeting has been continued. I will now move to agenda item number six, which is a public hearing for docket number 3823 for 1349 to 1357 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, so is the applicant here with us this evening? Yes. Perfect. If I could um, invite you to join us here in the front of the room, we will um, move into this item. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Pleasure. Great. Um, and so what I'd like to do this evening is uh, first turn this over to Director Ricker um, for an introduction of the project. Um, we'll then turn it over to you um, and you'll be allotted up to 10 minutes to introduce the project, anything that you'd like to share with the board and supplement of the materials that were submitted. Um, the board will then um, uh, discuss any questions that we might have with you on the materials. We'll then open this up for public comment. Anyone who's joined us this evening who wishes to, um, to uh, address the board relative to this hearing, the board will then reconvene for any discussion and decide whether or not we can take action this evening. Great. Great. Uh, so I'd like to turn it over to Director Ricker. Great. Thank you. So um, this is an application um, by Arlington Cole and uh, Lumber. Um, uh, to, uh, they are proposing to renovate the street facade, the old, um, I believe it's the old Oric vacuum um, display uh, or, or um, uh, shop of Mass Ave. Um, so they are looking to renovate and very slightly expand the existing ground floor retail space um, located in a mixed use building um, in the Village Business District uh, B3. Um, they intend to add some uh, bicycle parking um, as part of this project and then uh, make some repairs and um, improvements, uh, slight improvements to the rear of the building um, as well. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, so I'd love to turn it over to the applicant. If you could introduce yourself for record, um, then we'll let you take it away from there. Thank you. Thank Hi, you. My name is William Pubner. I'm an architect working out of Lexington. Um, and the firm is called Insight Architecture. As Claire said, we're the basic gist here is to renovate and improve an old and tired building that just needs a lot of updating. Um, <coughs> the nature of the expansion is in order to correct the deficiency that um, is inherent in the building now, that is the, the street facade, the retail facade on the street, on the sidewalk, um, has, a, as you can see in the plan, site plan, angles slightly in towards the entrance, the recessed entry. Um, the foundation below follows the straight line and the cantilever second floor structure also follows that straight line. It's just the actual storefront glazing that goes in. Um, the awkward condition is that it actually exposes or causes to be exposed the, the basin space below, um, going from zero at the left corner to about three feet, three and a half feet at the center portion. And by straightening out that line, we're going to move the weather wall, the glazing wall, out to that street line. The entry, which is <coughs> back it up. Please, of course, yeah. yes. Um, and if there are other pages that you need, just let us know and we'll clip, clip to yeah. those as necessary. Which is here, currently, and it's going to remain there. Um, the new line will run straight across, turn back in, symmetrical with this situation here, and that will then cover the, um, the exposed space below. Um, I'm sure that was built, that part of it was built decades and decades ago. Everything was fine, but years of wear and tear and New England winters have caused that to 
to deteriorate and there's um, moisture damage in the basement. So we'd like to correct that as part of overall renovation of the building. There's no other proposed additions or no structural renovation except for some, some of the beams down below have to be um, either reinforced or replaced because they're, they're, they're rotted or corroded. <coughs> um, if we want to go to the floor plan, just for a quick overview, that would be perhaps something. So there's the facade and the floor plans. Um, so you'll see on the drawing on the right, that's the, the retail space um, on the street. You'll see the line um, that I just described on the site plan and the, and the recessed entry. All the glazing is being replaced with the actual condition of the double doors leading into the, the, the retail space is to remain as is. That is an accessible entry and it will remain so. There's a second means of egress, which is at the back. That is a um, nominally a fire escape. Uh, it's enclosed, of course, but it serves the two apartments upstairs um, that are the interior of which are not being um, addressed in this um, application. Um, the, the facade, the, the building facade, is structurally remains the same, but it's being um, refreshed with all new materials. Um, and I've got samples of those with me today. Um, but the, the, the disposition of the fenestration, except for the straightening out of that one wall, will remain the same and just merely be upgraded. Um, one of the goals is just to make the building um, more energy efficient, um, thoroughly sound, and cleaner and neater for to meet today's standards um, for retail space. Um, as I said before, the apartments upstairs were not being addressed in this application. They were renovated in recent years, um, and a good nick, and that should be all record, on record with the building department. <coughs> the drawing to the left, the floor plan to the left is the basement space. Um, and that is accessible from the retail space via this um, internal stair, which is an open stair. It comes down and, and enters into this space here. This portion of it is, is not a technically habitable space. It's got a ceiling height of less than 80 inches, or 74, 84 inches, I'm sorry, 84 inches. Um, but it's used for storage of mechanical systems. This area is technically habitable because it has a seven foot ceiling. Uh, and it's currently accessed by the uh, door that is here and a um, pretty rough um, area way, landing an area way to bring you up um, to, up to the, the grade at the back of the building, which is parking. Um, what we're proposing to do is to completely rebuild that back area, that area way, to make it comply with the current code um, as far as risers, heights. Um, the railings, railings, guard railings, up which probably are not there, the door will be replaced. And this um, area of asphalt, the, 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 the rear area here is almost all asphalted. That's current condition that's used for parking um, and dumpsters and that sort of thing, all, all service uh, equipment. We are planning on picking up the asphalt in this area and putting in a level concrete slab. This is all covered by a, a roof on the back, which is seen from in the rear view. Um, and that'll become a little break space for the employees of whatever the retail space is, retail tenant is, is going to occupy the space. <coughs> um, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, Great. Any questions? If you are. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, the application. And I go ahead, please Great. go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me regress. I haven't, I haven't asked to, and I would like to do so. Um, request a waiver from the zoning bylaw requiring that bicycles that are stored inside the building not have to be carried up or down steps. The steps I just referred to at the back is most likely the way that any um, employee that coming to the, to the building would use. And there are five risers from the back area down to the basement area. Um, and so that is really the only way except for using the handicap the accessible entry at the front, which takes you right into the retail space for us to access the building. Um, so I'm requesting that we are we allow ourselves to have what we designate on the plan, bike parking inside the building, lockable bike parking, and that we are waived from having the, to, to meet the um, section 6.1.12 G3, which is that, far as that. The other, the other change from what the current documents show, that we'd like to go on record with, 
is that instead of having um, a wall hanging storage uh, system for the bicycles, which is shown here, um, that also is not considered, it's not compliant with Arlington bike regs um, requiring them. So they have to actually physically lift part of their bicycle and put it in the rack. So we replacing those with two U, um, U racks um, bolted to the floor that would be accessible for four bicycles. Great. So those are variations from the application that's before you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And we um, will um, certainly uh, discuss as a board the request to provide relief um, for Section 6.1.12G3. So, Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, so um, I will turn this over to Ken to uh, begin any questions uh, or points of clarification that you might have for the applicant. Uh, I like your watercolor uh, rendering. That's the... Uh, did you do that? No, one of my employees did that. Oh, very nice. Yes. Very, uh, yeah. uh, um, all you're doing is just changing the front, uh, front there. What, why are you changing that besides structurally? Is that geared to a tenant going in there or? No, not at all. It just seems, it, it seems like a gratuitous move architecturally, frankly. It does have the condition of the unsavory condition of allowing the base area to be stored more than it should be to the elements. And it just, just clean it up, straightens it out, um, as it were. It does add 27, I believe it is, square feet of space, but that's not really the intention. It's just that it, it just seems odd to spend a lot of money to, to, to replace a condition that I find architecturally um, inferior. No, no I, I don't argue with your fact about the, it's it uh, has deteriorated you're fixing it up and that's yes. why you're pulling it out yes uh, correct my question is if you don't have a, a, a tenant we do not. Uh, uh, that's that wants to take that space uh, you're limiting yourself by putting that entrance right there as opposed to having a tenant and then Knowing uh, what their requirements may be, it may fall in line. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, but to say they want it uh, on the roof, not, not the center. They want it off the side somewhere, so they, so they have more of a retail space. There may be a different layout for the inside. So I just think this might be premature to do this ahead, as opposed to leasing it out right now. Or who would see who would be interested in it then? As part of the tenant fit, I'll spend the money you're spending now on curtailing more to the tenant. Yeah, but I think it's relatively common practice to for a building owner to do their best at creating a space that would be desirable to a lot of different people and then offering it for lease um, in the condition that's in. The rigmarole that is required to to get permission to make changes to the facade, which is what we're going through now, um, is pretty daunting. And I don't know if our client would want to go shopping for a tenant and have the whim of the tenant say, oh, let's move the entrance to here, move the entrance to there. Um, it's because it, uh, yeah, it's taken several months to, just to get to the point we're at now. Um, so I think, well, I don't, yeah, I can't speak for the for the owner because I'm not, I just, I'm just a hired hand. But um, again, I've done, quite a bit of retail space over the years. And um, yeah, the idea of creating a uh, desirable space um, that would work, um, what we think would work best is, is what, what, what they're going to put on the market. The, it's, it's an aside of this conversation, perhaps, but the previous conditions in that, in that retail space were pretty, again, um, substandard. There was a single non-accessible bathroom stuck at a corner. No, I realize what was it. It was yeah. it was a very dated uh, vacuum yeah. vacuum repair shop. Okay. Yeah, we tried and, to make it much more desirable. And uh, I understand that. I'm just the reason I'm asking this kind of question is this condition happens a lot. I'm not say a lot, but it happens up and down Mass Ave. Which condition is that? In old retail space that's kind of been a little dilapidated. Yeah. And needs to be fixed up, sure. and, and it's, it's sitting empty, or it will be sitting empty. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just wondering, is there different ways to attract more 
business in there by, you know, and the fact you saying, oh, it's a very daunting uh, procedure to get a front door uh, fixed up new is kind of discouraging to me because, sorry, yes, I mean, it, the process then is holding back what people want to move and do things in here. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. You know, and I don't want that reputation of saying, oh, well, we want to open a shop in Arlington because the, pro uh, the process is daunting. You know, I, I want to say, oh, these guys are really helpful. They want to help you do whatever to make the business thrive because we want a active Mass Ave, an engaging Mass Ave. So if there's something that's holding us, holding them back and if it's us, I want to change that. That's why I'm asking, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the cart in front of the horse or whatever. So you know, I have no problem with you moving that forward and fixing the gate because it's, it's, it's dilapidated and, you know, the square footage you add there is minimal. All right. And you're, you're I'm assuming you're doing, redoing the storefronts there, right? Oh, yes. So there'll be, there'll be more modern storefronts. It'll be a little more open than what's there right now, because you can really see inside. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So you know, it'll be more interactive as you walk by. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great, but I just I just want to get a better understanding. Maybe not necessarily with this project, but just how it's viewed here right now, and that and it's it's kind of uh, disappointing how you presented it to us, saying it's a daunting process, it's a bad process. No, I, I don't think he said that. I, no, I don't no, want to put words okay. in his mouth. Okay, you're right. But but I don't want that to be that way, okay? I don't believe it is. So I, I, I think this is... It. I think we may be going down a path okay. that we don't... Oh. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. Um, Jean. Yeah, thank you. First, yeah, it was a very tiring <coughs> facade for a long time. So I think it's very nice that something nice is going to happen. To it. You, you brought those in. Can you just show us on the board which material, which profile right, sure. you're going to be using? Can you put the rendering up on the on the screen. Um, there, oops. We can do the line drawing or the rendering. There I think the one. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there's three different um, materials and three different colors that we're proposing um, for the facade. Get this the uh, residential space. Uh, um, this is um, the sign zone that we're, it, it's, not, it's kind of an existing uh, architectural element that's there and we're going to be stripping it back to structure, but then we're going to be repurposing re it. The signage itself is defined by this area and that's all, all in your documents. And then there's mostly glass here on the street and then a couple the opaque areas that just occur um, um, as part of that front facade. Uh, so the material, these are the actual colors we're proposing, but the material is a, uh, one is uh, a shiplap, uh, it, it's a smooth finish, there's two options, they offer the rustic finish and smooth finish, but the, the joining between the two, the boards as they move along is a, what's called a nickel gap, and it's that. So that's one of the sidings. And the uh, shiplap is at the sign band, correct? Say The shiplap is at the sign band, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and then this is another. This is, there's two kinds of ship There's a nickel gap ship lap, and there's the tight, the square edge where it's, where it's tight. Very smooth, but it's all done. It's a very smooth um, surface. Uh, there is a seam between each board, but they're very tight, and there's, this stuff doesn't move. So it'll, it'll, it'll look like a relatively smooth monolithic surface. Um, and then the third material is this um, Dutch uh, reveal gap, and that is, um, that is from up here. And that is proposed to be in this color. So it's this material is here, this material is here in this color, and then this is the stuff below. So it's a yeah, it's the, it's all quite similar veggie suede, just enough texture to define the residential zone distinct from the retail zone. Uh, the mixed use mixed youth use aspect of this building, which I know is something that Arlington Center is encouraging and likes. Um, I think it deserves to make it kind of clear too that it's not just one model of you know building. So that's what we're proposing to do. Um, and again, the material is is this stuff. Um, and the colors, of course, need to be approved. That's so independent of this. 
before you put that away, can I just um, ask a clarifying question? So, the where you talked about the ship lab for the vertical siding, mm -hmm. which is at the first floor retail space, and which is at the which spacing? The nickel versus the tight is at the sign band versus the. The nickel gap is below, and the. Um, uh, tight space. Tight one is here. Okay. So that, that isn't stro striped. It's striped in the elevation just to define the material. This will read very smooth. And the sign will flow, the signage, whatever that, whatever is proposed eventually when there's a tenant, um, that'll just float on that surface. This is a fairly well defined um, coursing. That's this one. And then this one has a very subtle um, coursing as well, but it's, it's, it's just to set it off a little bit from the signage um, data. Thank you. Do you intend to, I'm, I'm assuming the door on the left and the right go up to the two apartments. Are you going to be switching out the doors or will the current doors stay? This proposal does not specify that. It does not. The, the, the doors as depicted are, are basically a version of what's there now. Mm -hmm. And so we have no intention in the working drawings to have those doors replaced. How about the second floor windows? Will they stay the same? The, st the windows will stay. They're being recased. Um, but you'll notice they have sort of a, there's a bit of a mishmash. But those windows are relatively new. They were put in, again, I, we'd have to look at the building department, but I think within the last five years. So they're new windows. And then those go, oh, there's more in the back as well that are replaced. So the goal is to leave those windows and not discard them. But again, they're going to be recased. They're sort of, they're, they're very, randomly case at moment as well, so that'll all be regularized. Uh, but uh, but for windows are staying. And and you mentioned an opaque area on the first floor. Can you point yes, out what yes, that sorry. is? Yes, sorry, that's not much. It's just that uh, when this facade gets straightened out, the glazing will continue in a straight line, the same plane as this. The wall then turns and returns about three and a half feet. That'll be opaque. This section right here next to the doors will be opaque. And then those are the glass doors, new, new in the location that they currently are in. So it's just a bit. It's just a little bit around this door, here and here, along the bottom here, and then the part here that isn't door. It's, again, it's not very cool. Now, as the mill turns the corner, there is more of that. But as we move back past the stairwell, there currently is um, a relatively new hardy plank siding that's been applied to the building. It's in good nick, and it's, um, it's relatively new. So we're, we're, once we transition back away from the street, not right at the corner, um, we're going to transition back to that material. Um, be a lot of material just to discard and throw away, and there's really no public access to, to see that. And the transom over the doors, is that glass too? Yes, that's glass as well. Yeah, and and it, 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 go ahead. Are we going to say something else? No, no. It, it's glass, yes. Exactly. So I noticed there's a number, street number for the door on the left. I was there today. There's a street number on the door on the left, street number and door on the right. Is there a place for a street number for the retail space? Well, there is now. I mean, before there wasn't, with the angled glass was all glazing. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, done, you know, get it the style of time. One of the goals I have for the opaque wall this direction and this direction is to have a place for signage, perhaps a mailbox, if not a mail slot, those sort of things don't exist right now. Um, even something as silly as something, if there's an after hours delivery of a UPS box, it could sit in that little recess and not be sitting right on the street, as it were. Um, but that's the idea. I don't, I'm not indicating that here, but um, that there, there is wall space for that. To be for that was for a num building yeah, number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It also might make sense, and I don't know, maybe that's part of the whole signage request later on, would be to, to have that mounted you know, either either stenciled onto the wind the transom or mounted up here as well. Yeah. It's not addressed in this proposal. Okay, thanks. Um, I guess in response to what my colleague Mr. Lau said, I think the door is okay where you're proposing it. Yeah. So I forgot um, I forgot to mention it again. I don't I didn't want to know how much detail you guys want to get bogged down in. But there is actually a, an existing condition of a subtle ramp that goes from the sidewalk up to the sill of the door, which is the place. That's over the basement, but that's a one section that we're going to leave like that. 
it's, it's, it's not elaborate, but it's structurally been all worked out and it's all there. And it seems better to just try to restore that and make it good versus starting all over again. Because there is a, there's a discrepancy between the sidewalk level and the, and the retail store level. But once you're inside the door, the structural modification will make it to the floor back when continues to ramp up into the retail space for about 60 inches or so. So that's all in place, and that would be pretty dramatic to change. Not that it's not possible physically, but it would be a chief extent there. Um, also, when you look at the disposition of the space inside, there is a lot of busyness going on inside the retail space behind this part of the facade, where this is trying to be as much as possible a completely open floor space so that it can be very flexible, hopefully, for somebody who wants to retail. This is all definitely usable back in there, but it, it's sort of some of the, the part of the retailing that needs the business part of it um, is sort of like behind that part. So there, there is a, it's, it's not one big open box, as it were. Yeah, I just have one other question, I think, which relates to the bicycle parking. If, if we were to say you can't have the bicycle parking in the basement because of the stairs, where would you put it on the first floor and how much room would it take up? Uh, could we go back to the floor plan? Yeah. Um, let's think. Um, well, we're, yeah. Um, on, on the, on the, the floor plan, we're, we're call, we actually are calling for a U, a U rack on the street. Right, right. To supplement the one, there's already one on the street, but it's down the road a little bit. Um, we also are proposing exterior bicycle parking behind the building and potentially, I, I don't, I can't speak for how the, who the retail is going to be, so we can't take some, this, this is an on-grade closet exterior, it's closet, it's closed, but it's accessible from outside. This would be a, a, a good location for that to be located. It's in a secure, potentially secure space. It's a, it's a lockable closet now. Also, it took, and this is the this is the covered um, back ter patio area that we're talking about. Um, bikes also could be locked there. Um, although, again, we're hoping that maybe a picnic table and a place for, we don't have a lot of space. So we're trying mm -hmm. to work as we can. Um, <coughs> But if it was to come inside, I guess this, we were talking about this a minute ago before I mentioned it. The entrance here, this is the slight ramp up. This is a ramp continues up here. This is kind of the business part of things. I think we're gonna have two bathrooms that are gonna be built out as part of the build out and the retail, that's what they'll accept. There's a potential for a, um, uh, a break area, as it were, um, that's just a modest kitchenette kind of set up a place for a refrigerator and a sink and that kind of thing. So that, by the tenant's choice, could be enclosed or partially enclosed more than what it is in this drawing. I just wanted to make sure we're plugged for it, prepared for it. And so this area could be could be designated as more employee stuff, whether it's lockers, whether it's bicycle, parking, etc. Um, again, we don't want to build that in. Oh, sorry, we're trying to avoid having built that in because don't know the nature of the retailer, don't know the nature of, um, of that. We want to be as flexible as possible, but we don't have to then do a lot of plumbing and other extra external. I don't think we always want to do that. Now, um, I, I was kind of hoping that by adding any, by taking a, a, a step towards adding those kind of amenities was um, a far cry from what's there now, because there's no addition to that at all. So um, asking for the waiver, I realize this is asking for a waiver, and it's subject to your guys' discretion, but um, uh, I just just look at that it is, a, it is a full set of stairs, for sure. And I was gonna ask you, what are the stairs like? And Well, no, no, where are we doing them? Because currently they're a mess, uh -huh. they're a mess. Um, the idea is they're gonna be 7-Eleven, Rise of Tread. Um, in fact, what we could do, theory is we could actually, you've seen this I'm sure before, there, where a, a, a little trough is installed mm -hmm. next to the steps. So if somebody walking down still has to manage the device right. but they, they can walk, kneel it down okay. versus having to carry it down. And that would, since this is being rebuilt, that would be a possibility for us to consider. Um, anyway. And, so. how, and how, how high, like, 
is how high is the ceiling? Would it oh, it's it's high. Stuff? It's uh, yeah, the, the it's a, it's a shed. It, it's again, it should be the drawings, exterior elevations. Uh, the it, it, it the the lowest point, which is out here, is at least eighty inches. I suspect it's more like probably uh, ninety inches. It's 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 quite tall. There's no there's no limited space or full height door here. This is a this is a door to the back stair area, and this is a full height thirty six inch wide door as well. Okay. Um, and then landing. It's, again, it's all it's all the best now. This is a bit larger than minimum. It's just to make sure it's com it's comfortable. I was thinking about bringing in. They're going to have this is what this is the loading dock for this truck for this you know retail space. Stuff's all going to have to be brought in a truck and hand brought down into here. Um, so it, it will make it as we'll make you certainly meet all the current conforming access ways. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's it. Okay, thank you, Gene. Um, <clears throat> how, uh, roughly, what is the square footage of the first floor retail space? Um, I can tell you. I can't tell, I can't tell you what it is roughly. I can tell you exactly. Okay. That it is, um, the retail space is 1,528 square feet. That's okay. gross. 1,520, okay. In terms of bicycle parking, um, it, it's based on the number of uh, it's based on the gross floor area in use. And this, you know, the category we have is other retail or service use. That seems to be the closest. Um, the requirement is 0 0.1 spaces per 1,000 square feet, um, which, you know, at 1,528, uh, that would be 0 0.15 required spaces. So you, point one not, five. well, not even, not even one space. Yeah, yeah, you can, no, I know. I know. Yeah. But we're trying, we're trying to, to keep but, it so round up. Yeah. There, well, uh, if we, is it is it ceiling or rounding? 0. 0.15 going up is ceiling, but 0. 0.15 rounding is zero. All right. Going up. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'll I'll have to I, I'm gonna, I'll have to double check this, but I, I mean, my uh, coming into this prior to Mr. Benson's comment was that you really don't need bicycle parking. The fact that you're proposing it is, is great. Um, so I, I'm personally willing to be willing to forget to, be, to have some forgiveness here. I was going to suggest a little gutter for wheeling. Um, I've seen the pictures of these a lot in European cities. Um, you know, not a thing here in the United States, but uh, since you mentioned it, I, I'd encourage you to go that route as well. Okay, great, thank you. All right, that's all I have. Great, thank you, Steve. Um, I, I too, um, you know, think that this, in, in my mind, would be very easy to, to grant relief for the, the bicycle parking concessions that you are looking for. Um, I just had a, a couple of, of questions for, for you, um, specifically around some of the, the detailing of the new um, uh, window trim and some of the um, facade elements on the, on the front facade specifically. Um, so when I was looking at the um, the detail, I think it's on the, the, the building section that shows kind of the, the window trim and the um, and the uh, siding that you are adding there. They looked relatively coplanar. Um, and I apologize, I've reviewed actually several sets of drawings today, so I'm trying to remember which detail this was in. Um, I think it's in the building section in um, four on, on A2. Um, it, it, or maybe it's five. It's the, it, you, you do have a detail. Yeah, yeah, you do have a detail. What, what I'm looking for is um, it, it looked fairly coplanar in terms of where the, the the projection of the trim versus the new siding that you're adding. And one of the important elements, obviously, of having um, this applied trim around the windows is to provide an inadequate shadow line. Uh -huh. um, so that's what I was trying to, to get to into your drawings is to, to where that is shown, because I would want to ensure we've had a, a couple of um, folks in, in buildings recently around town who um, have have not provided an adequate shadow line between 
the uh, the framing around the win the uh, trim around the window and the siding coming in. So um, I think those are, are shown to be fairly flush. But if you can just address that, that would be sure. helpful. Yeah. The the the, the front facade. Um, <clears throat> the the casing would, would be. I think it's detail uh, five on sheet A one, Claire. I see it. Uh, five on A one is right there. Yeah. Okay, so this is, yeah. That's at the head detail of the window, I believe. Well, no, that actually five and A1, this is actually a blow up of the, of this, of this section right from here, see five and A1, it's captured. That, that would apply to, I mean, yeah, so it's the window and, and, and that as well. Any place where we're applying trim, I'd like to see, you know, a dimension there rather than them to be yeah. flush. This, this is, this detail is, is designed to be um, very, Identical, basically, to a residential window casing application, as if it was an old-fashioned wood window. Great. We do this a lot when we're using case or uh, clad windows that don't come with casing. Correct. Typically, they don't. Yep. So you have to apply it. And the way that we're intending to do this is just that. So this piece, this element, this is five quarter stock. It will be. It will be bold of the actual face of the siding. Okay. And because it is smooth and um, and, and picture frame, as it were. Yep. Um, it, because this siding actually has a, a horizontal texture to it, it will it will stand out. It will pop. So you are using the wood grain texture on the. No, there's not wood grain. It's just the texture between each board. Got it. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yep. Yep. So that that should be quite quite remarkable. I mean, the whole idea was to make this feel more like a residential, not necessarily a residential high rise, but a residential home. If that's right. Um, so that's that, five quarter, and the other is 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 a one by. So there will be at least a quarter of an inch. Okay. Okay. And then at the sign band, do we have a similar condition where we have the um, horizontal trim sitting proud of the? In, in this case, shiplap? no. If we if, if we scroll, scroll back. Over that's here, the one that's five over. over. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. In this case, if you, well, if you look carefully, you will see that this is indeed five. This is again five quarters. I yes. Say that. This is this is going to be proud of that. Well, that's the same one by stock, which, by the way, isn't three quarters. I think it's eleven to sixteen. So it's you know, nominally three quarters. Um, so it will. You can actually see if you look carefully. This there, you can see that it, it it's framed around, and there's a line in the background representing the face of the of the frame on the far side. But there it is. Um, and the, the, the more to the point, I think, is that that whole section is well set off from the facade of the rest of the building. The storefront below and the residential facade here above, um, this is, it sticks out, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a band. And if you look at the building now, um, it's, it's scruffy, but it, it does have that distinct element now that it's, it feels proud, it is proud of the actual facade. I'm suspicious, and I know from the, the, the analyzing, deconstructing the structure behind it, there's no change there. So I believe they just, when they built it, they, they just padded out of that section. And we're intending to strip all that out, repair whatever's not good nick, and then reclad it all. And so it'll, that, that element's going to stay. But I do feel like it's a nice way to get to set this part of the building off of this part of the building, to have that band read as a, as a proud unit. So this this is like the casing very much so. Then this this sits back this sits back from this yep. by about four. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm I'm very familiar. I live up the street, so I'm very familiar with the condition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that, again, my interest is in ensuring that the trim that's being applied and the siding are not co coplanar, yeah. and that there is enough of a dimensional um, difference there mm -hmm. that it it will provide a shadow line. Yeah, okay. that's the condition. Okay. Um, I had a question, but I think I understand now that you are dealing with existing siding, which is why there is a difference in scale in the siding. That is, you're you're showing two different scales of siding as we turn around the building on the on the sides. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Once we've gotten outside of sort of the street view, we're we're, we're going to maintain the existing siding. But it, right. you can see from the elevation views, it does return to the degree that anybody coming up and down the street sees the continuity of that front element. 
Is that why you are adding the horizontal siding on the side of the building at the top? This is in um, the right side elevation. There's the next sheet down in the upper left corner of the page. So we have that vertical siding there on the side uh, at the top of both stairwells. Is that because you're looking to create some sort of a break between Correct. That is strictly to uh, I set, set aside, set off. This is the uh, this is a continuation of the front facade. This part portion here. Mm -hmm. This, by the way, is the stair. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this this you see that going around the corner. Then as it gets back here, which is pretty much not visible in the street because the neighboring building is sitting right here. But have this bump into that horizontal horizontal this mismatch mm -hmm. would look, look wrong, uh, and have the single board. Look, I think cheap. And is that all coplanar? Well, coplanar, but because the materials are slightly different, it'll it'll go be no, a I understand. Yep. Yeah. But it is there's no it isn't built out. Yes, it is coplanar. Yes, answer your question. Nominally, these are the same thicknesses, and then this stuff back here, the hardy plank is is actually a bit narrower. There will be a that will set back three eighths of an inch, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the difference is. Again, none of this is this with the street. Um, on the other side, it's a silver dish and that's the back. Yeah, yeah, same thing. This all turns the corner, all of this turns the corner, and then this is, this. I'm just taking advantage mm -hmm. of this structural element that don't exist. This is, of course, out four feet or so, the stairwell. And so just breaking that up so that these two things don't have to collide with each other. It's a different. Now remember, this is the tight, this is the really tight, kind of smooth side of it. That's, that yeah. is, um, it's just going to read like a, a, a plane, a wall plane. I hear what you're saying, but then I also <laughs> look at the photos of the existing building yeah. um, and see the vertical boards that they have um, at the sign band on this building. If you go to the Claire, the existing, um, the existing uh, photos, the third page, I. Um, I'm, I'm just challenged by vertical siding. I think that it provides, um, it's, uh, if you go up, it's the third, third page. Uh, nope, keep going, um, up. Uh, nope, go further up in the document. Yeah, please, thank you. There you go. Down there, so I mean that that reads very str strongly, even though those are very tight joints, and um, I'm my thinking is that a two things. I think, and again, I'll see what the other board members think that where you are int introducing the vertical siding at the top of these stairwells, that it by you already have one by six trim that you're installing on either side of that as a break. Um, infilling that with the, just like you have below with the um, one by 10 covlap siding rather than the vertical seems to make more sense. And I, I'm just trying to, there, there's a lot going on in this facade, right? There's windows that don't match. <laughs> there's, um, two doors on the other side that don't match. There's, um, you know, we have the storefront, the, the residential, um, introducing the vertical siding in this as well is, is it's a lot for this little building in, in my opinion. And so creating either a, a panelized system for the sign band um, I, I don't think you need the vertical siding. The vertical siding on the at the storefront is just within the, re the the recessed vestibule, correct? As you push it back and then underneath. There's a little bit over here underneath. Yeah. A little bit here, uh, a little bit in the recessed vestibule. Yeah. This one yep. piece, and then and then you get here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, in my opinion, and again, I'll I'll see what my fellow board members think. You know, panelizing and creating, um, you know, a series of, of vertical trim members within a panelized system rather than 
adding another element onto, I, I, I know that you've inherited a very busy and already um, irregular facade. Um, it, it's just looking like a lot to me right now. So that's something that I, I think I'd, I'd want the board to, to discuss. Um, because I, I, I think we're, I, I really appreciate that this building is being um, rehabbed from an aesthetic perspective on the, on the front of this. I think I, I just would love for this to be the focus on simplification, which I think you've done by bringing the facade forward and installing new, um, you know, a new, a new storefront system um, you know, looking to continue the same type of material that you already have installed on the back, within the front. Um, I don't know, Kim, what are your, your thoughts here? I, I like where you're going with this, but uh, if I were to pick on uh, something to make this less busy and less you know, chaotic, my biggest ask would be to change the two doors. One, is a, one door on the left is a back door to a house. Shouldn't we not be facing the street? And the one to the right looks like a bar room door that, you know, or a restaurant door that swings in and out. Um, I would ask them to change those doors out. Uh, that bothers me more, much, much more than what Rachel's. I, I, I take her point about this. And I, I see your point where you have the sign bank going across and uh, the material you selected is not expressing the joint because it, it's a square joint. So it's, so it should read as just a line, okay? Yeah. So I, 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 I acknowledge that, but still, it's still vertical. It's still a line. Okay, but I, I'll give you credit for not expressing it. And the other ones do express it, like the ones above really express a shadow line. And the ones below is less of a shadow line. But it's still three different things. Yeah. But the, big, the, the biggest thing that bothers me is the doors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really brought up at all with between me and the client, um, as it was wasn't part of the program per se. But I I don't disagree with what you guys are saying, and I think it would be a fair ask to um, reframe maybe reframe the double door to match because that's another one's a standard thirty six inch eighty inch door. <clears throat> afraid them to be the same and then replace them with maybe a more appropriate street front. But again, not, not a glass door because we don't want to encourage people to no, no, think of the agree. Yeah. Residential. But, uh, no, I, 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 yes, not a back door. That's a fair ask. Uh, that's a very fair ask. Um, I don't want to emphasize it up. Again, I don't want to kick this thing any more than kick. This, this, these ribbed, the rib siding that they used is, is, is really really thrown out there, this is what they wanted. They wanted tech, not they, whoever did it. They wanted texture, wanted that. Sure. And so this is this is a order of magnitude, different, gonna be different look. It's painted and um, doesn't have all these extra bits and pieces. This has got a lot going on in here too. So that was the idea to simplify this stuff without necessarily sort of thinking the building is a new building. I mean, it is at the end of the day. It's the kind of work that we've got in a way and also, there's maybe a little bit of memory that deserves a nod, if not, you know. I'm all upset with not throwing any memory to what we're well, looking at right here. Exactly. <laughs> but my point is, um, so it's not up to me. To be, I'm, not, I'm not here to negotiate. I'm here to right. say what I, you know, what, how I feel about what you guys are saying. Um, yep. I'm going to defend to a certain degree the design, uh, but also be expressed so open mindedness to what I think, what I think are actually good. And that would go a long way, I believe. What you're suggesting, Ken, is um, if those two doors at least, they're not going to be symmetrical because the condition in which they sit is not the same. <coughs> but it would, it would start to regularize that a little bit and just say, like it's, it's two doors. Yeah. You know. yeah. I, 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 Can I say I agree, with, I agree with Ken on the doors? That's why I asked yes. if you were keeping the doors because when the rest of the facade is made better, then I think those doors will stand out as what happened, why are those doors there? So I think, um, I'm not sure what the door should look like, but something that's more in keeping with the facade, I think would be a vast improvement. As, as to Rachel's comment about the site, I, I don't know. 
Your thoughts, Steve? Um, nothing further. Okay. Um, can you can you just show those profiles again, yes. really, really quickly? Yes. So you have. So we're going with this. Correct. Here. Yeah, smooth. And this is at the. This is underneath the right the. Uh, storefronts. Sto the storefront windows that have the knee wall, correct? The corner wall. Yeah, all all smooth, but with that 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 but express that gap. Joint. Yep, yep, yep. And then this and then the actual sign band is this one. And what I'm trying to avoid too um, is seams. Um, you know, we always have the, the, the break between boards, but what you want to avoid is having butt seams, especially when they're random. So you, you'll notice that- Sure, you would need to create some sort of a regularized yeah, trend. And, and, yeah. I did, yeah. and I yeah. did that in my facade. That this, right. this is horizontal, and it's mm -hmm. toward coming 16 inch, 16 foot lengths. And mm -hmm. so I've got it, so we're controlling where the seams are. So that, even though it'll be very subtle, if it, if it, does, if it does read, if it telegraphs through, It'll at least read as being regularized and being like a panel system versus just brand. You know, we all know how that works. Decking and it's You're like, not going to stagger the seams? You gotta... We are staggering the seams, yes. Okay. We are. But we're staggering them in a regular way. They're not just it's not just random. It's like they're they're staggered exactly, and then where they where the seams occur are controlled by the board lengths. It's on the drawing, like I said. Uh, <clears throat> Like I said, I'm I'm not a fan of the the vertical siding. If the, my colleagues don't have an issue with it, um, so I'm not going to hold up your application because of it. The seams are staggered. Um, the lengths are full length, eight to sixteen footers. So we had with very few seams, but again, where they do occur, at least it's not random. Yeah, no, I appreciate that you've shown this. And there's this. This will read smooth. And then this will be with the network gap. Um, so that's the, yeah, that's the curve. So, Rachel, again, we have the, the curved Dutch lap here. We have this here. And then we have a third all in this Rachel, what small is, area. What if we you know, the sign band area? Please put one more page sheet. Oh, that's what I was saying. Yeah. And, yeah. Just, and uh, give me the vertical. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was suggesting there and below. Below. If they want to use the vertical, I just change the sign band. It's, uh, no vertical. So you're, you're suggesting flat panels on the sign band? Yeah. Yeah. But you'd need, then you'd need to add some yeah. sort of a vertical. Yeah. yeah. But it would be less often than, you know, be either eight footers or 12 footers. I did have, think how that would work with the sign band. Or with the sign, with the sign itself, with the length of the sign. Uh, In some ways, that bothers me less. And <laughs> I just, I really, am, you know, I just don't understand why we're adding another. I would rather do the. Get rid of the bottom? Get rid of the bottom. Okay. If you want to have only two, that's that's fine. I just take away these up top and then make it on the bottom. And just. You still might, you might you still use the same uh, express joint, but I just go horizontal instead of vertical. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay with that? I'm fine with all Sorry. that. Sorry. On the, on the wall below the storefronts. Yes. You have vertical seams right now, right? Correct. With uh, uh, concealed edge, concealed seams. You know, the way it is. It's a, a it's minimal. It's a nickel. That's it's a nickel. Yeah. Yeah. nickel yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. what if you say we turn that thing horizontal so the language reads similar on top and bottom. There's, it's horizontal going across and only the sign band is, is vertical. Okay. There Will, maybe there wouldn't be. Um, my, what I was going to say is that there would that have to be butt joints. There will be butt joints, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but we, we get, it'll be staggered, just like there's butt joints up, uh, on the top. Yep, yep. Yes, I agree. If that, if that, that that's, I don't consider that to be a deal breaker. Great. And the doors. Oh, and the doors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the doors. Yeah, I, I really like that idea. Um, we do too. <laughs> That work? You okay with that? Yes, I am. So it's a simple, simple matter of just changing from the from the nickel gap to the square edge, and no. going horizontal. Stay with the nickel gap. I don't care. Okay. But if you want to, like, we just want it horizontal. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's a, 
it's an easy yeah. access. And I think the nickel would be fine because then you have a recess much like you do. Again, it's smaller, so it's it's a different scale than you do on the residential yeah. at the top. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Any other questions before we open this up for no. public comment? Great. Um, so at this time, we'd like to open um, this public hearing uh, for public comment. If anyone joining us this evening wishes to speak, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing no one, we will close public comment and see if there are any other um, additions, points of discussion. Um, we, yes. So um, Mr. Benson did point out the, the relevant section of the bylaw. You do need one indoor parking space. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. Um, there's, I, I personally would like to, would rather um, for someone that uh, didn't require lifting the bike. Um, if you would like to put additional uh, racks in, in a, you know, in some sort of a lift system, that's fine. But I, I think one space that you know, can be wielded. Um, I very much like like your idea of your offer to uh, put a, uh, a channel along the stairs. Um, and I think that would be that would make it make it a real make it a really useful amenity. So, um, Steve, you're suggesting that the re uh, relief granted for 6.1.12 G3 is subject to the installation of a um, channel along the stairs for the purpose of wheeling the bike Correct. down into the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with your suggestions. I'm fine with the door change. I just like uh, administrative approval of what the doors are going to look like. Okay. I'm sorry, Eugene. What was the last? Administrative thing? approval. So you'd have to there get. Uh, yeah, we'll submit submit a drawing to you. Yeah. 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 No more meetings. No more meetings. <laughs> I don't yeah, that's, that's what I'm it means. Meeting. <laughs> don't say. It. Uh, Ken, did you have any other no. additional items? No. Great. Um, so with that, Actually, yes, please go ahead. Uh, does the owner know that there is coming up zoning for, for this area upcoming? I don't know if they know that or not. Okay. Just, just so that you know, um, the board, um, together with the Department of Planning and Community Development, has started a public engagement process to relook at the Arlington Heights Business District as a whole, and um, with the goal to bring to town meeting a proposal to um, regularize and um, create an Arlington Heights business district together. So um, and they are doing um, fairly cosmetic improvements, it looks like, to the exterior of, of this building, uh, but that's something they should, you know, could, could potentially be made aware of. Mm -hmm. I, um, sure. We have no control whether that will ever get approved by town meeting or on what timetable, but um, it, it's just something that they could be made aware of. And if it comes before town meeting, it, um, it, who, what would be the, the authority in, in charge? Sure, so the, the, uh, the, the, ta the town, so okay. the um, elected body of town meeting representatives from the town, um, yeah. once, a, once a proposal is created to go in front of them um, for a for new zoning, regulations which could have height, FAR, other um, uh, opportunities built into them, um, they, the, the um, town would need to approve the zoning change, um, and then that would need to get approved by the Attorney General's office. So it's a multi-step process. It's, it's not a fast process, to your point earlier, but it's just something that, again, knowing that they own this parcel and other parcels in town, it would be good for them to be aware of. That. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Great. I just, if I didn't say anything, I, I would feel like, you know, we did not inform your uh, the owner. Sure. No, I appreciate that. Great. Um, with that, is there a motion to approve the application for uh, docket number three eight two three for thirteen forty nine to thirteen fifty seven Massachusetts Avenue? Um, with the following uh, provisions that the board um, is in favor of granting relief for the uh, for section 6.1.12 g3 relative to the steps 
um, down to the bike parking subject to a channel being installed on the stairs for the purpose of wheeling bikes into the basement. Um, that the uh, owner will um, uh, add to their application the um, replacement of the two doors to the residential units facing Mass Ave and that those, the specification of those doors are subject to administrative approval and that the um, siding on the uh, first floor uh, retail facing or retail fronting facade be changed from vertical uh, shiplap siding to uh, horizontal shiplap siding with the nickel reveal. Those are the three items that I had. Anything else? Steve? I have one. Um, this is normally a standard condition number six that the applicant provide a statement for the town engineer that all proposed utility services have adequate capacity to serve the development. Um, since this really isn't a change of use, um, I, I'd like to suggest that we omit that condition. I have no issue with that. Nope. Can Jean? No problem. Okay. Um, with Steve's uh, addition to the list of uh, conditions, uh, which is actually a removal of a special condition, uh, is there, uh, uh, would anyone like to uh, make that motion? Motion as amended. Thank you. Second. Uh, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate. A point of clarification. Is how do you consider this a change of use? Uh, no, no. Uh, Steve was saying that because this is not not a change, not a change oh, oh, of use. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Like, <laughs> because it's not a change of yep. use, there's there's no need to um, attach that special condition. You're, you're going from retail to nicer retail. Yeah, that's, that's not a change of use. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I believe the building department, as a site, is going to require um, full and any mechanical, electrical, plumbing, sprinkler, fire, you know, all that. Yes, I would expect that. Year, yeah. Correct. Yes. So that'll. I'm sure that'll be addressed as well, but, but, right. but you would make a note right. of that. The, the other item that will, um, it, yes, and that will be, um, the, the other item that will be noted just so that you're aware as a special condition is that once you have a sign, that that will, you know, sign design for the, the tenant, which, you know, you may be working with, I'm, I'm not sure how that will work through, is that um, that signage does need to be approved by the Department of Planning Community Development. If it does not meet the signage, by the signage guidelines in our bylaws, then it would need to come back in front of this board for approval. And there are um, significant limitations on things like storefront film and um, number of signs. Obviously what you have shown currently conceptually meets um, our signage bylaw, but that, that's something that the owner should be aware of. Yep. Okay, great. We're very excited to see this building. Great, great. And you get something Enter in the lighting in a month. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, that closes agenda item number six. Um, we will now move to agenda item number seven, which is open forum. So if there's anyone here this evening wishing to speak to the board, please raise your hand. All right. Um, we'll close open forum and move to our next item, which is new business. And I'll turn it over to Director Ricker. Great. Thank you. Um, I don't think I have any new business at this time. Okay. Thank you. Great. Ken? No. Jean? No. Steve? Yes. You're always good for a point of new business. Um, accessory dwelling units. Has yes. Any, this is something that we should address during town meeting. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if staff has done any work on this. Sarah, if you'd like to comment. I have attended all of the webinars that the OHLC and others have been hosting. Um, so we are still waiting on draft um, guidelines to be provided for the OHLC. Um, I think we'll have to make some minor amendments uh, to our okay. to comply. So I was I was going to say if the if this hadn't um, process hadn't started, I would offer to maybe have a conversation with the ZBA chairs. Uh, because they see a fair number of these cases um, and, and get their feedback and then you know, send this to you for a look. I think that's a great proposal. Do you have any 
issues with Steve speaking nope. with the ZBA chair uh, with regard to proposed modifications to the ADU um, yeah. section of the bylaw, which we know we will need to adapt um, in some fashion to meet the, the, to meet state. the state re regulations. Yeah. Okay. Right, well, I will Thank you, you for that offer. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so without uh, any uh, further business, is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I guess as well. This meeting is adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.